Well, good morning. Welcome to Integrated Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith, and how are you all today? <clears throat> Grab your rebellion to tyrants and obedience to God mug from American Reversion. Fill it with something good and sip it with me while we talk. Okay, I'm sure you all are familiar with what's going down in, uh, in uh, Texas. Uh, and the question is, uh, is this the start of a civil war or a revolution? A lot of people have kind of argued about uh, which is going to be, and I'm going to tell you it doesn't really matter. Uh, m most people don't really understand what a civil war is, and I know that uh, by all the people who said that this is could be a second civil war. We've never had a civil war uh, because of what a civil war actually is. I've gone over that ad nauseum in previous videos. I'm not going to do it again, and I've written about it in my books very succinctly is what that is. But a civil war is two or more groups fighting for the control of the same government. Okay, that's not what that war in the 1860s was. <clears throat> what the war of the 1860s was, was uh, the federal government uh, <clears throat> oppressing and, and overbearing, laying overbearing rules, regulations, or failing to provide equitable, equitable defense of a whole section of the country in favor of another section. Does that sound familiar? And the southern states decided, well, we're not a part of this anymore and we're going to separate. They did. And, uh, and Lincoln uh, called up a bunch of troops and invaded the southern states, which by that time were no longer a part of the United States. They were a sovereign group, a sovereign political entity, the Confederate States of America, uh, made up of, of uh, sovereign states. So that was not a civil war. Uh, is, is, is a civil war coming? It could be. It just kind of depends on how it, it plays out. Or it, it is a revolution coming? It kind of depends on how it plays out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because either way it's going to be a, a huge stinking mess. Now, interestingly enough, when I got up this morning and I saw... Uh, uh, several uh, people came out, several channels came out, actually channels that I don't usually watch, um, but I, I, I wanted to see what people were saying in this in this regard, uh, and, and I see excitement. Now, I don't mean excitement amongst all those chest thumpers that we're, uh, we've heard from for years about, it's time to stand up, why don't we stop talking and start doing something? Nobody pays attention to those people, or you shouldn't, because... You know, they're they're just they're just trying to stir up stuff, and they're just talkers. They're not doing anything, you know. But they're they're acting like they would, and want to know why you aren't. And of course, I've always said, well, you know, for anything to really come about, it's going to take enough people to be upset at the same time, and it's really going to take a a a leader, a leadership organism of some type. It's going to take something major enough to bring enough people together. And I, I think this this could have, have been it, the situation in Texas. It's going to continue to evolve or devolve. And, uh, and now we have 25 other states who are supporting uh, Texas in, in their stand against the federal government. Uh, 25 good governors, 25 good states. Uh, there's a lot of other governors out there uh, who aren't good governors, and they they got good stakes because they got good people in them. But um, the the problem is, is that, you know, is is the head of of the the state that that is important. But we have many many twenty five other states. Uh, some sending troops, some sending all sorts of things. We have people spilling into that area from all across the country. Uh, what is going to happen? So anyway, this this is this may be the the catalyst. This may. Uh, be what happens. I made uh, the statement, was it on this channel? I think every day I start off on the Patreon channel with kind of a thought or something like that. Uh, and it's great. If you're not with us on Patreon, the link is down below. You should be. There is so much more over there than is on uh, YouTube. And every day I start off with a uh, a picture of something and a thought and then throughout the day all the patrons who want to will come on and make you know, uh, comments, and, and there's a lot of good back and forth there. There was one comment, I, I said, uh, one of the things that I, I said was, is this an Alamo moment? 
if and if you're not familiar with the Alamo, I'm not going to go ahead and explain it here. Uh, look it up. Um, it well, it, it was it was a stand against uh, Mexico by a small group of Texans when Texas was getting ready to uh, <clears throat> declare or had declared their independence from Mexico. You know, and, and the Alamo was a great last stand. It was more than just where. Uh, Pee Wee Herman, you know, was told his bicycle was in the basement. For those of you who only follow modern culture, uh, it was uh, it was you know a rallying cry. It's it's a, a last stand. It's one of those things where everyone was killed and it becomes a a a focal issue, right? And uh, and what what it did was it was the opening shot of what became the the Texas Revolution. Uh, so when I said, when I asked, you know, or made the statement, is this an Alamo moment? Somebody did say, well, hey, you know, Alamo didn't work out too well for us. Um, well, why, you know, maybe we could find a better example. No, there is no better example than that. What, what the Alamo was the beginning, not the end. And I've also said that most great movements need martyrs. Now, are we going to see that here? Are we going to see, uh, you know, a, a martyrdom like the Alamo? I hope not. I, I seriously hope not. Um, but even seeing the uh, the state of Texas, the people of sta Texas, the people of the United States who are all suffering as a result of this uh, un seemingly unlimited invasion of our country by by foreign people, many of whose we know don't have our best interests at heart, that victimization can itself replace the martyrdom, if you understand what I mean. Um, so yeah, it, the, the, very possibly, uh, I think this could be a uh, an Alamo moment. Uh, now, does, does it result in civil war? Does it result in a revolution? Uh, that's hard to say, because very often uh, the two come together. You know, if you study the the Irish uh, uh, rebellion and the civil wars that happened, if you if you uh, remember the 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 Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, you know, a, a group of people uh, come together in common cause, want to overthrow um, a a common f foe, right, or fight against a common foe, and then start fighting among themselves. <laughs> okay, that 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 can happen. It's really not a laughing matter, but I've, I've studied this a lot of times, and the, you know, it's, I won't say funny, it's interesting how that happens. You should be ready for any of that. Now, what's going to happen is, of course, we have a, a building conflagration down on the border. Um, of course, you, you know that the Border Patrol was snipping the wire at the orders of their superiors, I'm sure. Uh, at the orders of the president, uh, and uh, and then the Abbott had the Texas Guard go down and and throw them out of that area, put up new razor wire and barricades, and and uh, send them down to the uh, the port of entry so that you know they would go through the right way. But illegals shouldn't be coming into our country anyway. If they want to come into our country, they need to do the processing outside our country and then come in. And if we need to build a big old, I don't care what it is, huge place to stick them before we land up into our country so we can check them, well, let's do that. But don't let them in. I don't care if they stay there 10 years. Uh, and maybe the word gets out, so many of them won't be coming. Uh, but we know the reason that they're coming is because they hear they can get in. They hear about catch and release. You know, Juan and Maria come up to find a better life for, for their family. And I don't really blame Juan and Maria because they have been told that, um, you know, the Golden Goose is up here and, the, and America is letting them in. And they're told, well, you come to the, you know, throw away all your paperwork so we don't see your criminal records. And uh, come in and tell us who you are and... and you're John and Mary Smith, and here's a notice to appear uh, in in a uh, you know in an immigration court in uh, nine or ten years. You know, make sure make sure you show up, Juan. Right? 
Okay, or 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 Ahmed, or uh, you know Chiang Kai Shek, or whoever, because these people are coming from all over the world. Uh, <clears throat> so as that as that escalated, then then of course we have the Supreme Court, uh, which is wrong often. Uh, say, well, no, uh, the the Texas can't do that, and now uh, Biden has ordered the. Uh, for all those barricades to be taken down, and they're in the process of it. So now, what, what happens next? Well, uh, Abbott has escalated it, and uh, you know, talked about invasion. He is he is he has invoked the invasion, and I'm going to read that. It comes out of Article Four, Section Four of the U.S. Constitution, and it says that the Constitution states the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. Okay, that's the Constitution. Now, we go from there to something else, and that is the guys on the ground. What are they going to do? Well, uh, you've got Texas Guardsmen, and then uh, you have federal, you know, authorities. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we hear a lot about, well, I swore an oath and I'm going to uphold my oath. Okay, and I thought, well, now I wasn't in the military. I, I took an oath, you know, when I entered law enforcement, but, uh, but I wasn't in the military. So I says, I hear a lot about this oath. Let me see what this oath actually is. Okay, so I, I looked up first the enlistment oath, and many of you know this because a lot of you guys were in the military, right? So this, you know. I do solemnly swear or affirm I will support and defend what first? The Constitution of the United States. Simple as that. Okay. It doesn't say I will support and defend the president. I will support and defend the Democrat Party. I will support and defend Joe Biden. I will, so, you know, it says I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, just foreign, no, foreign and domestic. Now this is for real military and you know, we hear all this stuff about well the military can't can't operate you know in in the, within the United States. Well, you know, let's look at it here against all enemies foreign and domestic. Well, you know, I could run with that for an hour. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and that I will obey the orders of the president of the United States. Now we're getting into the orders, but I rem and you guys in the military know there's a difference between lawful and unlawful orders, right? So it doesn't say in here, uh, obey the lawful orders, but that's what it means. Uh, and, and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. You know, and I studied the, the UCMJ uh, when I was doing that stuff. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's along the lines of a normal, you know, criminal justice, but, but there are differences, and you guys know that. Okay, or in the National Guard, here's, here's their, their oath. It's a little bit different, but not in major. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the, what, Constitution of the United States. Right, okay. First item. And the state of whatever state you're in, in this case Texas, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now we we have it pretty much the basic you know way, except they also uh, swear that they will support and defend the the Constitution of their own state. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to them, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the Governor of. Okay. Now this has to do with whether they're operating as you know and as a state guard for the state, or whether they have, have been uh, nationalized or federalized. And the orders of the officers appointed over me according to, now here, here, here's the difference. Here's, I remember that up there in the, the regular enlistment is the regulations and the uniform code of military justice. Down here, it's a, according to law and regulations. The law can be different. The state law can be different than the UCMJ. Okay, so there's some differences there, but at the top of each one, uh, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Now, how many of the guys down there do you think know what the Constitution says? <laughs> how about next to none, right? Now, I bet there are some now digging into their pocket Constitution, hopefully they have one, and saying, well, let me read this stuff. They ought to be. 
None of those people down there. Most most of most law enforcement don't know what the Constitution says, except those specific parts of it or the Bill of Rights that apply to their daily job. You you, you would be hard pressed to find a law enforcement officer of any ilk that can tell you much about the Constitution, except those parts of it that are their favorites. You know that they like to refer to, and the same. Is, is probably true, I would imagine, the, the true of, of the military. I might even guess would it be less because most of the people who join the military after they take their oath, they don't have to study very much about the Constitution, right? Uh, and it's not just the privates. How many sergeants do you think know much about the Constitution? How many officers know much about the Constitution except, you know, as they were in their continuing education, had to go through and learn some of this stuff? Well, you know, so so when the, 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 the sergeant tells the guy, get over there and do that, you know, the the, the private, what's he going to say? Uh, sergeant, the uh, the Constitution says that I shouldn't do it. Well, you know what the end, you know what the response is going to be, right? I didn't tell you to tell me about the Constitution. I told you to go over and do that. Okay, well, that's, that's what's going to happen. Um... Uh, I got a little bit farther into this stuff than I meant to on this channel. I'm going to do a lot more over on the American Reversion channel because that's where we talk about the political aspects of this. Uh, and uh, uh, so, if you if you are interested in the political aspects, and that's see that's where we are. We still are in the politics of it. We're not in a shooting situation yet. We're still in the politics. And uh, you know, if you if you're interested in that, and you should be. Join us on the American Reversion channel, and that link is down below, and that, that channel is growing. And I'm glad to see it, because that's where people's attention need to be right now. Uh, all these people that have been yelling and screaming for the last couple of years with their mowing lobby t-shirts, you know, cold dead hands and all that, you know, they haven't done anything. They try to get other people to do things, and I doubt that they will be the ones to do much of anything. When, I mean, there are exceptions. If you're the exception, I'm not cracking on you. But most of these, I see them. I see them at the gun counters. I see them at the range. They're 80 pounds overweight. They're sloppy. They, they're trying to grow a beard, but they can't. And they, they, they've got all this stuff on them. And they waddle up to the firing line with all their gear and shit that they probably couldn't run across the parking lot with without having a heart attack. And they go, bam, 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 bam. I'm going to do Okay. Those, those, those are the morons that uh, you, you hear so much from. Okay. Uh, so what's going to happen and how does this apply to you in a preparedness situation? How it applies to you is, uh, first off, pay attention to everything that's going on down there. This is the time. Information is your friend. Okay. Not what you're saying, although my job is to say things to, to, to pass on to people in this, in this venue. Uh, not what you're saying, but what you're receiving. Get all the information you can. Understand what's going on down there so that you can share it with people who don't. You would be surprised at how many people don't have a clue about what's going on down there. You know, if you looked at that war in the 1860s and you looked at our revolution, I'm sure there were a lot of people that, that paid no attention to it. And so when things started happening, they, they, they were going, what? what? Where did all this come from? Where did all this come from? Well, you see, it's up to you. Uh, your job now is to try to educate people as much as you can. Okay, get them ready. Get them see who's who. See who you you think you might be able to um, have good relationships with when if if it all comes down, or who you you wouldn't. Okay, you you might be surprised at at some of that. I've been surprised in the past. If I can be surprised, you can be surprised. So you have to get ready because this is going to this this has the the potential to affect every area of your life. No matter how it blows up, uh, it it could result in all of those things we talk about when we talk about full preparedness. It could disrupt uh, supply. Okay, it could it could disrupt food deliveries. It could disrupt uh, economic channels. It could disrupt anything. And depending on where you live, and depending on what state you live in, or what municipalities, uh, or what dirt road you live down, I don't care. You think it's not coming to you? It could. Uh, depending on what position 
your state or your governor or your group or you or whatever says, you know, you could wake up one morning with your alarm clock not going off and realize your power's been cut. Okay. Yeah. You could uh, run down to the grocery store to uh, get some candles, you know, to light and some batteries and find that there are guards around your grocery store who are there demanding your identification, uh, asking your need, taking you through a whole checklist, taking you through as you turn off the road into that, that parking lot and all of a sudden you find yourself in a little tunnel of, of cyclone fence and a, and a guy in an armband directing you over there at which time you and everybody else in your vehicle is uh, is being questioned about who you are, where you live, what you're there for, uh, and on and on and on. And uh, and what food do you need? Well, we don't have. Uh, no, you can't go in the store and just get anything you want. This area is under the supervision of the military, blah, blah, blah. Uh, how many in your family? There are four. Here is a box of supplies for a family of four that should last you. And there's some macaroni in there, and there's some rice in there, and there's a roll of toilet paper, and there's a, okay, this, and, and we're going to sign off, and here's a card for you to carry, and you're on the list now, and you can come back in three or four days and get another box, and you're on the list, which means if you don't have, the, this is the only place you are to come. And if you are not, uh, if you are on the list, when everything's going to be computerized, so don't try to go to the other grocery store. Okay, uh, you can come back if you don't have your card. You're not getting anything because that shows us that you're trying to get us over. We have it on record. You have your card. Come back in four days. Get another little box of crap for you and your family, and uh, and and there you go. Okay, well, and so you try to go to work. Uh, well, no, no, you get to you get to the barricade down there, and there's all these Humvees parked around. And they, where are you going? Going to work? No, nope, you're not going to work. You're going home. Okay, back during that war that some some uh, uneducated people like to call the Civil War, uh, they had something called um, Order Number Eleven. Do I have time to explain it to you? Let's see, maybe Order Number Eleven. <clears throat> The border states between Missouri and Kansas, and one of those states, right there are four states right across the state line. I live in Kansas now, but I'm, I'm a Missouri guy for the most part. Uh, Jackson County, Cass County, Bates County, and uh, I think it was the one up north, uh, Platte County. Uh, they were, were so full of Confederate sympathizers that the Union... Uh, put out order number 11 and said that every Confederate sympathizer had to leave those counties. And if they didn't, they were going to be burned out. And, and they did. They burned out. They burned out barns, houses, killed people, killed livestock, all that. They wanted everybody out who would not swear an oath to the federal government, an oath to the Union. Bates County, Missouri was totally depopulated. It's just 20 miles southeast of me here. It's the only county that has ever been completely depopulated uh, as a result of government orders. You think that it can't happen again? <laughs> I would suggest you think about that real hard. No matter which of these, and I'm not, I'm not addressing the politics here, I'm addressing what you need to keep in mind preparedness-wise. This could put a complete clamp on everything. You can imagine everything that it can affect you. Get ready. This thing may play out politically, and it may not. I have never seen, nor have I read about anything getting to this point in our country uh, since the 1860s. And We've been wondering how long it would take for this ball to start rolling. Well, it seems to be rolling. Now, whether it continues to or whether it picks up speed and all of a sudden 
it is going faster than than you can keep up with that's why you need to get ready for it right now prepare get food in have your water situation taken care of have your shelter taken care of have your defense taken care of i just ordered some new freedom equipment myself um, because it hang on half a second okay those of you who I mentioned this yesterday if you've read the stone mouse series uh, you you know how Jim Wyatt the house that I described at his office uh, <clears throat> so you could look at either way and see everything out front and everything out back well that's what I that's I, I wrote that because that's what I had okay um, I'll let you know about the books in just half a second because you might want to read them you might want to read them if you haven't um, so all of this could 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 affect you get ready for it this could be worse I mean, I don't know you know it, it's hard to say what would be worse what's worth a CME an EMP I mean I've had people ask me that question and there is an answer but I'm not going to answer it now uh, but those things are complicated. Uh, which would be worse, a revolution or a civil war? <laughs> hey, you don't want either one, but either one could be coming. Okay. And I will say something here. I just watched Buddy Brown's. If you're not familiar with Buddy Brown, go watch his video. And he put a very, very straight reminder to our service people out there. And that is, remember your oath. Remember your oath. I was just following orders. Doesn't cut it. And you don't want to be on the wrong end of justice if you went outside that oath. Okay? Just, just putting that out there. Now, if you want a complete plan on how to prepare for, how to survive, and how to rebuild after pretty darn much anything, uh... The Stone Mott series is, are my books, my series of books, six novels in which I put just jam full of uh, preparedness and survival lessons and government. I talk a lot about that war in the 1860s. I explain it. I explain what happened. I explain why it happened and, and much, much more. But it's in a great story. It's not like a textbook. It's not dry. People who have read these things love them. The reversion, the revival, the renewal, and appeal to heaven, the blessings of freedom, and hostages to fortune. They're available on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, or now Audible. And I've, I, the Audibles are exploding. People are buying the Audibles. All, all you guys who spend a lot of time listening while you're doing other things, uh, you, you workmen, you over-the-road drivers, uh, police, uh, a lot of military. We have a lot of military reading these things. Uh, firemen, everything. If you if you prefer to uh, guys who you know <laughs> are having a hard time seeing, uh, if you like to listen, uh, the all of them are up on on uh, Audible. I already had somebody tell me they've already binged through the whole series twice. And do that. You'll want to go through the whole series multiple times because I guarantee you, you will miss so much the first time you read it. You'll be caught up in the story. You'll miss so many lessons. How do I know? Because I've had hundreds maybe thousands of people tell me that okay they're also available through me if you'd like to order them directly from me on our website stonemont.us in which case i love signing them for you you know I, i'll sign them for you if you have somebody that you'd like me to sign them to i love doing that too just kind of be, i had somebody ask me would you put in uh your recipe for chili like you had in your book well that that takes uh, quite a while to to, to write out right I can't I can't be doing that I did have somebody says would you would you put a, a coffee stain on the on the sign page because I'm I'm drinking coffee Jim's always drinking coffee Jim Wyatt main character of the books uh, and I'm happy to do it doesn't take too long just to dip my finger in and put it on your your page I thought that was funny that was great so get these it's gonna prepare you for so many things and the links are down below uh, if you want to join us on over on the American Reverser channel, I suggest now would be the, a great time to do it because politics is a role, and then you want to be involved. This is going to be one of the this is going to be one of the most interesting years any of us have ever lived. And if you want to join us on the Patreon channel, the link is also down below, and I put so much more over there than I do on the YouTube channel. 
uh, it's over there if you'd like it. So uh, that's it. Remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Crazy stuff happening. Prepare for it or you'll be sorry if you didn't. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.